probably going to have to use that denoise filter again. I don't know if you'll like that, but I think it's a lot better than the constant noise. Um, I think it just makes me sound a little echoey. Um, um, but we're on our way to my EEG. We're going to the epilepsy unit. So um, I'm not excited. I found out that I'm not going to be able to go outside, so um, there's no way I'm going to go to use my vaporizer because it'll smell too much in the room. So my fear of that is true. I'm content with it, I guess. I got that. That's the only thing I can be. My head has been extra sensitive lately, which does worry me. Like, I've been, like, brushing my hair and it hurts. Or rubbing my hand through my head and there's areas that it's really tender. So, um, I'm sure this is going to be very, very difficult. But, um, I'll update y'all when I get there. Hopefully the lady will let me record her putting all the, the bobber stuff in my hair. I can, like, blur her face out and stuff. So, um... Hopefully she'll let me do that, and hopefully they don't have to put gauze on my head, because I think that's going to make it um, hurt more. The closest way I can like try to um, explain it to y'all is, I don't know if you've ever had one of those pimples that when you just lightly press on it, it's sore. It kind of feels like they're gluing electrolytes all over, like small little baby pimples all over my head, which sounds really gross. But that tenderness of how tender, that's how tender my head is. And um, so that's the only way I can explain it. Um, and it like adds some burning sensations in it because I'm allergic, the, the glue is, I'm allergic to the glue. So it's, you know, my skin's just sensitive and bruised underneath. And then the glue on top of that in the tape that's going to be on my forehead, um, I'm allergic to all of it. So I'm not looking forward to this, but I know that we need to find out why I'm having my mind jerks. I did get to smoke this morning, but I didn't get to smoke as much as I wanted to. Um, the kittens in, the, in my garage seem to have, possibly have um, cat flu. So I have been cleaning out their eyes, but I'm not gonna be there for four days. So I'm hoping my dad will do it, or maybe my mom will do it if she goes. Well, I have another flare again, um, so. I'm really eager to get into my urogynecologist and um, hope he can do something for me because for the longest time the cannabis was helping a lot and it does help but when I'm not able to smoke that's an issue um, so I need something that I can be able to take during those times when I'm not able to smoke I want to try to avoid taking something, but I'm in so much pain, I can barely think. It's, I, interstitial cystitis has, pain has been compared to bladder cancer, like the end stages of bladder cancer, and I don't understand why it's not mandatory for them to give us pain medication, but it's not, which is stupid, and um, has a lot to do with, like, the opioid, opioid crisis and all that stuff, which I don't think that they should, um, punish chronic pain sufferers for that um, because there are studies out there and proof out there of millions of people that are using pain medication and can do it without getting addicted. Um, so I feel responsible patients shouldn't be punished for that and there are people all over the world that are getting their medication cut and stuff and I haven't even been able to get it. Um, every time I go, they treat me like a drug addict. And um, the last time I went to a pain manage management doctor, I came out of the room crying um, because she just she was just rude. She didn't want to talk about why I was there. She wanted to talk about my um, past, and it, that was not that didn't it wasn't relevant with what we were needed to, what I needed to be there for. It's a big ass claim. Um, I can't think at all. I wanted to say, if you are annoyed by the pauses in my talking, I keep most of the pauses in there. Like, not like the full length. 
I cut out a majority of 30 second pauses, especially when I'm thinking about um, what just happened. There's a long, long pauses. So I'm cutting stuff out. But if my videos take too long for you and you're annoyed by the pausing, at the end, bottom of the video little thing, there's this area where you can speed my videos up. You can speed anybody's videos up. Um, it might sound a little mousy depending on how fast I talk, but I don't really think you'll notice it very much with the amount of pauses that I do. When I talk fast like I just did, you might notice it a little bit. I don't know, maybe that's a suggestion that y'all might like. I'll love you y'all when I make it there. Okay, we're here. We're late as fuck, but I'm in my chair, thanks to my mommy. Okay, we're going inside. I'm nervous. She says it's past the candy striper's desk. I think that's what she said. Candy something. Past the first desk, apparently. Epilepsy unit. Pass. I have to go back to the registration desk. I'll show you. Thank you. My mom's coming up here too, so okay. she'll be up here soon. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm so sorry you were late. I'm here for the. Okay, so they're about to call us down. Um, to get, be admitted into the office, but there was like a mix up with the insurance, but we got it fixed. They wanted us to pay like 780, but somebody told my mom that our Medicaid would fix it, would like cover the rest. So. We're in the unit. today and this will be your home away from home for the next three days. Okay, so haven't traveled outside the United States in the last 21 days? I have not. No? Okay. And we show you allergic to trazodone. Mm -hmm. What happens when you take trazodone? I get really suicidal. Okay. any medications for seizures, right? Mm -hmm. Did you bring all your meds with you? Okay. Yeah, uh, they're out in the car. Oh, are they? I tried to get her. I had to park way, way up. So I tried to just try to get her here because we were already okay. running late as it was. Okay, so. yeah, no, that's no problem. Have you had all your meds that you normally take this morning? Mm -mm. Okay. I don't take them in the, in the morning morning. Oh, okay. So you don't take any meds in the morning. Okay. So when do you take your meds? When I wake up. Okay. And what time does that use? Are you a night owl? Do you stay up all night and sleep all day? <laughs> no, it, it goes from I sleep during the day and then I sleep and, and it goes like around. Does that make sense? So like I'm in, I'm awake during the day and then next thing you know I'm awake during all night and then I'm awake back during the day. And so it's constantly changing. Okay. So um, I try to take my pills the same amount of time apart. Okay, so what um, I have here that she, she has given me orders for your... Um, your headache medication, um, your B12, your aspirin, your turmeric, and D3. You have a lot of other ones that you take? I, I have a lot of them, but they're in the car. Okay. Do you mind going to get those? I'll get them. Just so we can kind I of have a them. list of them. Oh, you do have a list? Oh. Okay. So my mom's going out to get all my stuff. So I thought I would do a, like, um, what do you call it? I just noticed that. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, a room tour of, like, the room I'm going to be in for the next like three to four days. I'm going to leave on the fourth day in the morning. So it's kind of like three days but um, I'm going to switch the camera around so that you can see everything. So we just got the normal chair here and a TV. Looks like we can put DVDs over here. Let's see what's in here. Nothing except that weird thing. I don't know what that is. Okay, but we got that cart. I'm sure that's worth the camera on it that they're going to be stalking me with. And all that equipment. Sink. Another TV. Not a TV, but a computer for them. And then my bed, of course. And then Ariel. 
on my bed. They have this, I'm assuming this is so if when people have huge seizures, like grand mal seizures, they don't hit their head. I'm assuming what that's for. But I've got another window. Let's go to the bathroom. Toilet. Lovely. I'll be using that a lot. Thanks to interstitial cystitis. Let's see my window view. I'm paranoid someone's gonna walk in while I'm videoing. I'm totally sure they're going to, but... I'm stuck. But, yep. That's the whole room. My bed, that'll be sitting in forever. And there you go. That's my room tour. I haven't done a room tour before, so sorry if it's all like all over the place. Which direction do you want, Ann? Oh, just scoot forward. Scoot forward. Right about there. So what's up with the uh, the wheelchair? I use I have um postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. Okay. So I get really dizzy. And then I also dislocate when I walk sometimes. I have a small brush in here somewhere. Fire that noise. That's air. Drives the glue for me. Mm. Yeah, I think we're going to get a little smelly in here. That hurts. Inside the uh, solution, a little gritty. So. It's not the. It's not the solution. It's my my scalp. It's. How's the tender? It's. It feels like you're putting it on bruises. I've eaten and I've taken some um, medication. I took a migraine pill and my duloxetine. So unfortunately, I do have a migraine, but so far my head's just annoying. It is burning, but it is just an annoying type of pain. It's not a um, like I'm going to die type of pain, which is good. Um, my flare did go away, which was awesome, and I'm drinking a Mountain Dew to help me keep, stay awake because I have to stay awake till 4 a.m. tonight, um, which is probably going to be hard. I think it'll get easier as I go. I don't know, maybe not. Sometimes and just it kind of just depends. So the more tired I get, eventually I get to this point where I like to just wake up and I'm exhausted, but I can force myself to stay awake. I'm hoping that happens tonight. Um, but I am editing. Sorry about all my mess. But I'm editing and um, just having fun ish. Um, I still don't know if this is going to be a one video or several videos. It just depends how long it's going to be. I might just have it as one video. That might be easier just to upload it and like that instead of having several. It just depends. But, um, I'm gonna update you later on. My stomach's feeling a little bit better. I've been throwing up a lot, but, um, I'm gonna try to eat something. I don't know if I'll regret it. I probably will, but maybe a few bites will help me make, help me feel better. I have no idea. I keep going from being extremely hot to where I'm sweating and um, throwing all the covers off me to covering up and um, my pots is really aggravating me today so um, I got a bunch of bracelets 
fall risk, and then my allergic thing, and then like, the white one that just says information. But um, so far my head's been okay. It is a little tender. And it is burning, but my other chronic illnesses are what's affecting me the most so far. <laughs> So we're going to be getting ready to bed. And they put an IV in me that y'all saw earlier. Um, she tried it earlier on my arm, but she couldn't get it to go in. So they had a guy come do it in my hand, which is a... Um, it's kind of like a lifeline. They don't really... They're not going to put anything through it. Except for like IV Zofran. For when I'm throwing up a lot. Um, which helped earlier, so... Um, I was hoping they could put fluids through it, but they said they can't treat anything while they're here. They're just here for the EEG. But, I'm gonna go to sleep, so I'll update y'all tomorrow morning. Bye. Good morning. Um, last night I ripped out my, um, IV. I have no idea how I did that, but you can see the little dot where it was at. So, hopefully they don't have to put another one in, but they're probably going to. Um, I don't really know where they're gonna put it, though, because... My veins are just so tiny they couldn't find any. And, um, if they put it in my hand, it's probably just going to get ripped out again when I go back to sleep. And I don't want to have to get a IV every single time I wake up. Um, but I do, um, the IV sovereign did help more than the pill did. Because I couldn't keep down the pill very well. Um, I'll, my head is doing okay. It still burns. It's painful, but it doesn't seem to be as painful as it was last time since I've been just in the bed. Last time when I was at home, you know, I was having to do everything myself and carrying that thing around. And so it was tugging at my head constantly. And so I really think that added to the pain. Um, the more I move, the worse it gets. So, so I'm just trying not to have to go to the restroom much, which not very easy, but I'm hanging in there and I'll update y'all later. Bye. Alright. Are you ready? I am ready. I am too. One, two, three. Oops. You're not good at that. I have my mom. <laughs> Except for dropping the syringe. Mm. At least it didn't far fall enough to pull the needle out. Yeah, that would have been bad. That would have been a good shot, though. Yeah, it would have been. That means I had to stick I pulled my IV out last night. I had it in my hand. I didn't even wake up from it. Oh, so I was going to say you didn't mean to. Yeah. Some people have turned pulled their IV out before on purpose. Sure. Yeah. People who aren't supposed to aren't completely down. with it, you know. Yeah. You wake up in a hospital confused, and the first thing you want to do is go. So you start untaching everything that's attached to it. Mm hmm I probably did it when I was having a nightmare. I've been doing okay today, but um, I haven't been able to get comfortable. My neck is giving me a lot of problems. I haven't been able to figure out where to put all these wires for some reason today to keep me comfortable, because everything's in this backpack. Um... I've been putting pillows behind my bed, behind my head. Um, like, whatever I put behind my head, it feels like my head's being pushed too forward, or not enough back, and I'm not able to hold my head up today. I seem to be pretty weak. Um, my mom's going out to get a different pillow out of the car to see if that helps. Hopefully it does. Because I have a neck pillow, but the neck pillow's too squishy for some reason. It's a memory foam, but it's like way too thick. 
unfortunately. So I'm probably going to have to get a different one eventually. But um, I just wish I could get comfortable. I'm working on editing this video. I've decided I'm just going to have it in one whole video. And I'll put time codes for the days at the start. So, you know, first part of the video will be for day one. And then I'll have another. I'll have a time code for day two and then three. And then when I get home on Thursday, I'll finish edi editing the whole video and get it exported and then uploaded on YouTube. YouTube. So I'm excited about that. It's gonna be a long video, but it just makes more sense to keep it all together um, instead of splitting it up. Because I'm not going to be able to um, upload everything in time at night because of how long it takes to export a long video. I'm still not able to get comfortable in my chair. The neck pillow won't stay behind the chair. And I'm not comfortable at all in the bed. So being in my chair has helped a little bit. And I'm just using my hands to hold my head up. Um, Dr. Cantrell came in and... Um, all my brain waves so far have looked normal. I have had baby myoclonic jerks, but um, so far they do not seem to be seizures, which is promising. Um, but um, they're having me point them out to them now, and they'll clip it out and send it to her, and tomorrow she'll be able to tell us more um, if it's normal or you know, non-seizure act non activity. Hopefully it's not. Hopefully it's something else. Um, so I'm having a little issues today with my wires, but so far I'm, with it being tied around my chair, I'm, um, comfortable. So, um, I'm going to try to stay awake tonight because yesterday I was sleeping most of the day on and off, which I shouldn't have been, but I didn't sleep good the night before. So my mom kept having to wake me up constantly. So hopefully tonight I can stay up late and a bunch of my mind clonic tricks will happen. But we won't know until later on. And so I'll update y'all later. My skin's really giving me issues. It's that gross, um, crawling sensation all over my skin. I don't know how to explain it. There's no words to explain it. It's just an awful, painful sensation that just flows underneath my skin and I just my body like naturally shakes my arms I'm just sitting there you know trying to get through it and then my arms just like start shaking trying to shake this feeling this painful feeling off of me and that doesn't make any sense logically you can't shake some a feeling off of you so hopefully they're gonna give me some pain medication um, to try to help because I can't medicate here but <sighs> sitting hurts my like my clothes are hurting my skin and you know you can imagine up here if my my clothes are bothering me you know those are glued to my skin and every time I scrunch my forehead or anything that adds to the pain any type of movement so I've been able to um handle it but now it's just getting to the point where I can't. So, I don't know what to do, but hopefully the pain medication that they give me will help because it's just, especially in the shoulders and the arms, um, is, um, where I really feel it when, but today I'm really feeling it in my shoulders and my arms and my head. Um, but, Tomorrow is pretty much my last day, and when I wake up, I'll get to go home, so I'm really excited about that. I'm trying to focus on that. But I wish I could just not have to deal with this right now. That'd be great. They gave me a hydrocodone, so hopefully that'll work. Um, she says I should probably get back in bed in 30 minutes, which I was planning on doing that anyway, so. Oh god, I just want to shake the feeling off. It hurts so bad. It's about a 7, um, out of 10. I don't really like using a 1 out of 10 pain scale. I like using 1 to 14. It makes more sense to me, I think. The hydrocodone helped, um, a lot. 
but I'm gonna go ahead and go to sleep. So I'll talk to y'all tomorrow. Good night. Good morning. I've been up for a while. Um, I took my medication and they gave me another hydrocodone, so I'm trying to stay awake, but it's making me want to take a nap. Um, I woke up confused this morning and in quite a bit of pain, so that's why I took the hydrocodone. Um, when I get home, though, tomorrow morning, um, I'm gonna medicate. I'm really excited about going home tomorrow. Um, I'm just... I'm glad this hasn't been way too painful. I thought it was going to be a lot, a lot more painful than it's been. Um, at home, it was awful because I was moving around. You know, I don't. I think I said something about that earlier. But here, people have been helping me. My mom has been helping me, and I have dropped the bag a few times, and that has escalated my pain a little bit more. But um, it's bearable with the hydrocodone right now. Um, where is it at? This one's fallen off. But they're not going to put it back on. I think my mom told them about it. I didn't, but my mom did. It goes up on my forehead somewhere. Um, Dr. Crenshaw is coming again tonight, and hopefully she'll have some more information. Um, if not, I'm going to ask her what she thinks the jerks are. Um, but I'm just watching um, Z Nation and listening to Sweeney Todd um, the, like, soundtracks every now and then, going back and forth, and, you know, also, obviously editing also. Um, I really miss my kitties. I can't wait to sleep with them and cuddle them and pet them and love them and just see the baby kittens and, you know, see all my babies and my Reese's, which is my puppy. See my Reese's. See my doggy. Um... And, um, I forgot to mention it, but Tuesday, which the first day I was here, I don't know why I forgot to mention it, but I did, was my first Autism Awareness Day, knowing I'm autistic. And, um, so this is my first month of Autism Awareness, knowing I'm autistic also. So I'm wanting to make a video, um, about how I got diagnosed and all my symptoms and stuff like that. I'm wanting it to be posted this month, but I haven't even, I haven't started, work, I have not started working on it, um, because I was kind of late knowing that autism, that autism was April, so awareness month, so, um, like I knew it, but it didn't, like, I didn't remember it, if that makes sense, like I've, you know, I watch Fathering Autism on YouTube, and, um, they talk about it all the time, and I've just, autism has been in my life since I was a kid, because, um, I was pretty much the only kid in elementary school that was nice to the people in the special ed class, um, which, that's what they called it when I went to school, I don't know what they call it now, hopefully it's not something else, and that's not a, a slur, I don't know, um, but... Um, there is a video I'm going to link in the bottom of the description. Fathering Autism put me in his video, and so I thought y'all yeah, might want to see that. And it's just a picture, but I'm excited that I'm in it. That was awesome. I just you didn't think, um, I sent the picture and I didn't think I was going to get put in the video, but I was. So that's really cool. Um, but I am going to make a video. I don't know if it'll be up in April, but it's going to be up. So look forward to that, and I'm looking forward to getting home tomorrow. I'm trying to stay awake so that in the morning when they wake me up in like five or six to leave, I'm not dead tired and can help my mom some more. Um, but we'll see what happens. I'm gonna edit this video and update y'all later. Bye. Dr. Cantrell just came in and informed me that all my brain waves look normal. And that should be a good thing, and it is. That means I don't have seizures. But that leads us back to the what the fuck are these movements. She don't she does not think that they are myoclonic jerks either. Um, so that kinda bothers me because for the whole time trying to find out what the cause was, I assumed and from what she told me that myoclonic jerks 
for the symptom diagnosis. Um, and myoclonic jerks can be pretty much caused by anything. The problem is she doesn't think they're myoclonic jerks anymore. So I'm like, okay, well, what do you think they are? And she says, I have no clue. I'm like, okay, so what should I call them? And she's like, I don't know, spells maybe? And I'm like, that's not very descriptive. The people are wanting to know what's wrong with me, and I want to know what's wrong with me, and I can't give them an answer. I have all these things wrong with me, and I can't ever give anybody an answer. I guess I'm just going to call them jerks now, because I'm not going to remember spells. I guess I could call them episodes too, so... Um, I'm probably going to retitle my epilep my myoclonic jerks video. Um, since we're not calling it myoclonic anymore. Um, I just feel very defeated right now. I feel like all of this was a waste of time and a waste of money. And I had like at least four or five my first day and I had at least t ten the next day and I pointed out the really huge ones to them because they would be able to see those on, lo on the camera and everything and they all look normal. You know, I have a bunch of them all the time but they're so small that only I can feel them and only I notice them which is really frustrating and I think that's going to make it harder to diagnose Part of me wonders, like, if I am I ever going to get a diagnosis? You know, it took 15 years to get my interstitial cystitis diagnosed. And they told me that that was stress and anxiety. And she says that my jerks are probably stress and anxiety. And that's not an acceptable answer. I'm not going to let her do that to me. She's not going to be lazy and not find out what's wrong with me. There's something wrong with me. It's not just stress. I'm sure stress is related to it. Of course there's stress is related to it, but stress is not going to make me have those involuntary movements because I've been having them for a long time now and they've just been progressively getting worse. So whatever is wrong with me obviously is um, degenerative. So the sooner we get answers, the better. And she didn't even tell us how, like what her next step is and I didn't get to ask before she left. So I'm probably going to call the doc call her office tomorrow and find out when my next appointment with her is and ask the nurse that question and hopefully they'll get back to me. i got to be content with her not knowing because as long as she keeps trying, I guess. It really made me mad when she said it was stress though. Really pissed me off. Because that's just a lazy answer to me. I'll talk to y'all when I'm in a better mood. Kinder eggs are um, supposed to be illegal in the United States. I'm not sure if this is like an authentic Kinder egg, but it says Kinder on there, and it's an egg form. So um, they used to be um, illegal because of um, the choking hazard. The fact that it came in food, there was a gray area in the law that made it where these were outlawed in the United States. So. Um, I found it at Walmart, and I'm pretty sure this is like an authentic Kinder Egg. I'm assuming it's um, newly allowed in the United States because there are these big um, like areas where they're just like you know those areas in Walmart where it's like a big tub, and you have to dig down to get all the stuff. It's kind of like that, full of these. And so I'm assuming it's a new thing that they're allowing in the United States. So I thought it'd be a good idea if I tried it on camera because it'd be like a taste test. And um, I'm a little upset about my news, so I thought this would be something that I could do to cheer myself up. Do you want to taste it, Mom? Taste it? Something you eat it with a toy inside of it. See how I open it. Ooh, it's hard to open. I don't know if this is authentic or not. I think this is something different. Yeah. 
they had to sep they had to separate the toy. Normally the toy is in like this yellow egg type of thing, so this is a different thing. And this is supposed to be the I don't know if I want to eat this. Yeah, this is weird. This has to be something different. Do you want to taste it? No. Why? Sweet cream topped with cocoa waff waffer bites? Are there like different types or do they all like this? Because normally it's like a chocolate egg. And I really don't want to eat this. It's too sweet for me. I'm not getting that. Let's play with the toy. It's not the worst thing in the world. I just, I'm not a big sweet person. I'm smart, I can do this without instructions. Trying to do it where y'all can see it. I'm gonna put a picture up on um, the screen of what an actual Kinder Egg looks like because apparently I'm they're still illegal in the United States and this is just like a the company I think made a version that we can have in the United States. Where does it? Okay, maybe I need to look at the instructions because I'm not very smart. Okay. I put a rubber band thing there. This is supposed to go in the tub or some shit. I don't know why. So you're supposed to like twist this thing and then it'll like f apparently float in the water in the bathtub? That's weird. But that's what it looks like inside. It's too sweet for me. This thing is okay. The little ball thing. It's weird. Yeah. But this is the one I had. I'm not sure if there's any different ones, but... I want to try the actual Kinder Eggs with like the little yellow ball egg thing that's inside. So next time I'm at Walmart, I'll look at them all and see if they have different ones or if they're all like that. But yep, that was me tasting it. I'm sure that was boring for you. You're welcome. That was me tasting it. I'm sure that was boring for you. You're welcome. Okay, so I know what I did. The This is a Kinder Joy, and I should have gotten a Kinder Surprise. So they might actually not, they still might not have these Kinder Surprises in the United States. So I didn't get an authentic, like, Kinder Surprise egg. Um, but it was something to do. So now that I know that, 
It was just something that I saw in the store and I picked it up. Hopefully a Kinder Egg tastes better than that because if it doesn't, I'm going to be disappointed. I just ate and I'm um, going to finish editing. I'm pretty much done. I just got to, you know, I'm just editing the stuff that I'm adding to it now. So, um, I have another one of these things fall off of me. I can't remember. I think it was a red one. They don't know. I didn't tell them. But since they're, I don't think they're going to put it back on because they didn't put the other one back on. Um, my hair is, I, like, in so many knots. I'm going to have so much fun brushing it. And the day before I came here, I broke my brush. Like, my hair broke it. So, I gotta go get another brush. Because the little comb I use to here works only if your hair is semi-brushed. And I've got like a million rat's nests in my hair right now. So, I'm gonna need to go get a better brush. Um, I'll update y'all again later. Even though I got some bad news, I'm not gonna give up. I'll find out what they are. Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned it earlier, but Dr. Cantrell thought... It could be some kind of ticks. Um, so I'm not sure if that would be related to um, Tourette's or not. But that has been brought up. So we've just rolled out seizures. That's all we've rolled out. So I'm going to go ahead and go to sleep. And I'll update you tomorrow when I get to go home. Bye. Is everybody's hair normally this messy afterwards? When it's long, yes. Yeah. I just got all the stuff taken out of my hair, but um, I will update you when I get home since we're going home now and it's pretty dark, you can barely see me. This is the aftermath of my EEG. All this hair. I have some like red areas on my chest right here where the tape was at. It's little some electrodes down here. Um, I'm not sure about my stomach, but I should show you a different way. But this is how I'm gonna do it. This is all the tangledness of my hair. So I'm going to have a lot of fun um, taking that out and brushing it out. But um, I got to rinse out all the stuff that they sprayed in my hair because it's like, I don't know, it's gross feeling and it stinks. Kind of smells like a mixture of paint thinner and oil. Um, it's not like extremely like in your face, but when you get a whiff of it, you're like, ugh. <sighs> so I'm gonna wash my hair and then put it up in a bun and let it dry and then I'll go to Walmart and go get myself a brush because I broke my brush. Well, at least my hair did. So I'll see you after my shower. 
Hey, so, um, I just got out of the shower, and, um, I'm really tired since I've stayed up all night. Um, I just couldn't sleep, and then by the time I could sleep, I would have only had, like, an hour of sleep, so I just decided to stay awake. Um, it's, like, 9 a.m. now, and so, um, I sound a little sick, I think. Um, I didn't wear my mask in the hospital because of how long I was there. Um, so I might have gotten sick. I don't know. We'll find out. Hopefully it's just um, me being tired or something. I don't know. But um, <clears throat> this was my first time using my wheelchair out in public. And... Um, I wasn't expecting anything to be said at a hospital about my wheelchair. I expected something to happen, like if I went to Walmart or Kroger's or um, in an area of places where people are not medical professionals. When the guy asked me um, why I'm using the wheelchair, I wasn't upset with him or anything. I assumed it was just conversation starters because he was going to have to be messing in my, like he was going to have to be putting shit in my hair for the next 45 minutes. Then my second night nurse asked, and then one of my day nurse asks. So I had several people ask me why I used a wheelchair, um, and why I have a wheelchair, and stuff like that. And I told them it's because of my postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, and the amount of pain I, in, I am in when I'm walking. I was more specific with certain people than others. Sometimes I would say weakness, sometimes I would just say POTS, sometimes I would say pain. It just kind of depends what came out of my mouth the first time that came out when I said something. There's a lot of reasons why I'm using a wheelchair. Um, and I don't feel like I need to justify my reason to use a wheelchair to people. Because me and my doctors know it's best for me to use a wheelchair. I know it's best for me to use a wheelchair. And um, when... The nurses were asking stuff, and I told them a small answer of like pots or something. They'd be, they would give me their two cents, and um, I didn't ask for their two cents. I realize that um, when you, if you have just postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, I'm going to be referring to it as pots though. Um, when you just have pots. It is advised against to use a wheelchair because you should exercise. The more exercise you do, the better. Okay? But you have to do safe pot exercises, which I do. I get my yoga mat out, and I do some some um, yoga stretches, and I'll do some um, safe exercises that I can do without making myself faint. I even have some that I can do in my bed and my chair. So I work out. Do people know I work out? No. And that's because no one's in my room. I'm in my room constantly, by myself, pretty much 24-7 with my cats. And no one sees my daily routine. So I'm thinking about doing a daily routine and night video. Um, what was I saying? When the lady told me that I should stop using the wheelchair, I kind of got upset. Um, I didn't at all show it. I'm very happy with myself. I um, stayed calm and didn't blow up in her face or get mad um, visibly. So I'm happy about that. Um, I tend to um, I have a little bit of trouble um, controlling my reactions to people. Especially when I feel um, vulnerable and attacked. And um, they, she made me very much feel like that. So um, I told her, actually, it's best for me to use a wheelchair when I need to use a wheelchair. I don't constantly use it. I never said I would constantly use it. I always said, walk when I can walk and use the chair when I can't use a chair because I can't do anything if I don't have a wheelchair. I had to wait at home all day for my mom to come home because I was too 
in too much pain and too dizzy to walk to the kitchen to get myself food. And I'm throwing up all day. Somebody with POTS and with the amount of throwing up I do needs to be able to eat and needs to be able to keep himself hydrated. And if I can't get to the living room, that's an issue. So the chair is a blessing. Okay? It's also saved my energy and I'm able to clean my room more often recently since I've had this chair. Because I can conserve my energy and use it for more important things than just walking to the fucking fridge or restroom every five minutes to 30 minutes. So, um, so then I explained the reason for my wheelchair more extensively and, um, said I have really bad balance and I just assumed that my balance was associated with my POTS, but she informed me that it wasn't. So, um, when, um, one of the nurses informed me that it wasn't POTS, that was making me so, um, my balance off so much, um, that made us, like, that gives us another question now, like, what's causing my balance to be off, because it's not my ears, we've already checked my ears, and then when I got the POTS diagnosis, I just assumed that dizziness and balance kind of went together, but it doesn't, um, so, we gotta figure out what's causing my balance issues, so I'll bring that up to Dr. Cantrell, and um, we still have to figure out what these involuntary movements are because we don't know. We know less now than we did when we went in there, which is very, very frustrating. My last night, though, was my easiest night. Um, my second night was my off was awful. I didn't um, feel good. I was in so much pain. I was sweating like a football player and I couldn't get c comfortable. I was either painfully cold or painfully hot. There was no in between. Um, eventually though they got me ice packs around me and I got under the covers and with the ice packs and the covers I kind of got I got in a happy medium, I guess you could say. I was still, like, miserable, but it was a lot better than my previous miserable. So, um, overall, I'm happy I did do this because it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. And we didn't put me on, and we didn't put me on any medication that I didn't need, which is awesome. And that's what I was afraid that was going to happen, and I was right. So I'm glad we didn't put me on any seizure medications, because I don't have seizures. Um, I told her they weren't seizures, but of course I'm not a doctor, so what do I know? Um, that aggravates me though, when doctors feel like that. To, I'm in touch with my body really, really well. I just do not have the words to vocalize what I'm feeling. The doctor cannot do her job without the information that I'm giving her. She is just a highly paid consultant. So if she can't figure it out, I'm going to go to somebody else that can. And um, my phone's about to die. So I'm just going to end off here and say thank you for watching. I totally appreciate it. And um, look forward to my other videos that I have planned. And um, I'm sure my POTS tilt table test will probably be up before any of the other ones. But I'm excited to work on all these videos that I have planned. And excited to see where my channel goes in the future. And... And I'm motivated to figure out what's wrong with me. So I hope you stay along for the journey. And thanks for watching. Bye.